Hello everyone, my name is Przemysław Koprowski and in this uh, short uh, video tutorial I will show you how to use uh, vectors and uh, matrices in a free computer algebra system SageMath. Vectors and matrices are fundamental objects in a branch of mathematics called linear algebra. Uh, today we'll see how to define and operate on uh, vectors and matrices uh, in a free computer algebra system SageMath. Uh, if you don't know what SageMath is or you don't know how to use it, how to get it, uh, you can check my previous video tutorial. Uh, the link to it is uh, down in the description or it ap should appear on the screen uh, in the top uh, right corner. First, uh, we need to learn how to define matrices. Uh, in general, matrices are uh, rectangular arrays of elements some, from some ring or field or whatever set. And uh, the first syntax to define matrix is the following one. Uh, you use the built-in class matrix, uh, you provide the parent set of uh, coefficients and a nested list of matrix elements. Each row is given in a separate square bracket and the whole list of rows is enclosed by an outer square bracket. Let's construct, for example, a square matrix of size 3 by 3 uh, over the rationals. Uh, we'll take the following coefficients uh, 1, 2, 0 in the first row, uh, 3, minus 5, minus 1 in the second row and 2, 2, minus 1 in the last row. Once we define the matrix, uh, we can uh, pretty print it on the screen using the command show to see how the matrix looks like. There is also a second method for constructing matrices in uh, SageMath. Uh, you can provide the, um, again the parent set, then the number of rows and the number of columns, and then the list of coefficients enclosed in a, a single square bracket. Uh, to illustrate this second syntax, let us build another square matrix. Uh, let's, let's call it B this time. Uh, it will consist of consecutive uh, integers uh, from 1 to 9. Uh, the double dot operator uh, constructs uh, a list of uh, consecutive numbers, so in this case these are numbers from 1 to 9. Matrices can be uh, added uh, to each other using the standard plus operator. Uh, likewise, we can multiply matrices uh, using the standard uh, multiplication operator. Be aware, however, of the fact that uh, matrix multiplication is not commutative, so a times B and B times A are two different matrices, uh, so these two uh, multiplications gives us two different results. Recall uh, that uh, there is an operation which is unique to matrices, it's called transposition. Uh, basically the transposition flips the element around the uh, main diagonal, so the elements that are that were above the diagonal now are below the diagonal and vice versa. In a Sage, the transposition is obtained by calling the built-in method transpose. Uh, so if we do a dot transpose, uh, you can see that the elements that are on the diagonal are left intact. Uh, but the elements that were above the diagonal and that were below the diagonal are swapped. Uh, so, for example, the number 2 that was in the lower left corner of A is now in the upper right corner of its transpose. And the element that was in the upper right corner of A is now in the lower left corner of its transpose. Alternatively, instead of writing the whole word transpose, uh, we can use the abbreviated form and write a dot t. Uh, observe that uh, in this case we do not uh, give the empty parenthesis after t, uh, but other than that the result is exactly the same. It's again the transposition of a matrix. Another operation uh, that takes just one argument is the inversion of a matrix. 
Uh, as uh, one can guess, uh, the method that computes the inversion is called inverse. Uh, so if we write a dot inverse and empty parenthesis, we get the matrix inversion. We may verify the uh, result and multiplying the matrix uh, we obtain uh, again uh, by A uh, and as you can see we got the unit matrix uh, as expected so A times A inverse gives us the unit matrix that that's what inverse means actually. Uh, like with a transposition uh, there is also uh, abbreviated form uh, so we don't need to write A dot inverse every time uh, we can write instead A hat minus 1. Uh, this means we rise the matrix A to the power minus 1, which is uh, equivalent to compute it its inverse. So if we do that, if we write A hat uh, minus 1, we got exactly the same matrix as, uh, as if we uh, called A dot inverse. Uh, to see how all these operations work together, uh, let us define one, one more matrix, uh, let's call it C, and uh, let us compute, uh, the, evaluate the expression A plus B transpose times C inverse. Uh, so we write D is A plus B dot T, so which was B transpose, times, times is just the matrix multiplication, C inverse. And uh, Sage computes the result, so this is the matrix D that we wanted. A standard function that comes together with matrices is the computation of a determinant. In uh, Sage you can compute the determinant in two different ways. Uh, both results are of course the same. You can either write A dot that and empty parentheses. Or alternatively, you can use more traditional notation and write that of A. Uh, of course, uh, both uh, methods produce exactly the same uh, final result. And now it's time to look at the vectors. Mm, uh, vectors um, are defined in Sage in much the same way as matrices, except that uh, vectors have just a single row or a single column of uh, coordinates, so we don't have a nested list, we don't have nested uh, square brackets. Uh, so the syntax to define a vector is the following one. Uh, you call the built-in class vector. Uh, you provide then the base ring or, or a base field and the uh, list of coordinates uh, with respect to the standard bases uh, enclosed by a single square bracket. Let us define, for example, a vector V uh, over the rationals uh, with coordinates 1, 2 and 4. Similarly as uh, for matrices, uh, there is also another way of defining uh, vectors. Uh, this is very useful if we define uh, lots of vectors. So we can start by first defining the uh, vector space. And only then we just uh, cast the uh, list of co coordinates into uh, this uh, vector space. Uh, so, for example, uh, let us define a vector space of dimension 3 over the rationals. So our vector space, we'll call it uh, V, is Q cube. Uh, now we can define a vector, uh, let's call it W, and as I said, we just cast the uh, list of coordinates into the vector space V. So we write a V, parentheses, and then the uh, list of coordinates. Basic operations or basic arithmetic of vectors is uh, just the same as basic arithmetic of uh, matrices. So you can add vectors using the standard plus operator. Uh, you can compute the dot product, or our name is scalar product of two vectors, 
uh, using the standard multiplication operator. For three-dimensional vectors we have also the so-called cross product. It is a method in a class of vector. Uh, so to compute a cross product of V and W we write V dot cross underscore product and uh, the other vector in parentheses. As it is well known, the cross product is always perpendicular to both arguments. Uh, so we can verify the result just computing the dot product of our result with any of the two uh, arguments. So let's say we compute V cross W and then we take uh, this result and we compute its dot product with uh, V again. Uh, as we can see, we uh, got zero, so it is uh, in fact perpendicular to both vectors. Of course, you can also multiply uh, vectors by matrices. Uh, Sage will automatically treat the vector as a column vector if you write a matrix on the left and a vector on the right or uh, it will treat a vector as a row vector if you write a vector on the left and a matrix on the right as long as the dimensions agree uh, then Sage computes the um, product of a vector and a matrix. Now uh, we'll see how to use uh, SageMath to check a linear dependence of vectors. Uh, the three-dimensional di three vector space uh, may be a bit too boring, uh, so let us take uh, five vectors in a five-dimensional vector space over uh, of, uh, rationals. We want to check uh, whether these vectors are linearly independent or linearly dependent. Uh, to this end, we will call the method linear dependence. Uh, be aware of the fact, however, this method is not in the vector class. It is the class of a vector space. Uh, so we use the, the vector space, uh, capital V, and then we write dot linear dependence and the list of vectors that we want to check. If the vectors were uh, linearly independent, uh, then uh, Sage would produce an empty output. Uh, since it uh, outputted a uh, non-empty list, uh, so these vectors are uh, linearly dependent and the list that we received are just the coefficients such that it will take the combination of these vectors with these coefficients uh, when the result would be a null vector. Uh, we can uh, verify it, we can see it, how it works just by just taking the, let's say, the first uh, list uh, in the output and producing the and constructing the uh, linear combinations of our vectors v1 to v5 uh, with these five coefficients. As we can see, uh, the linear combination is indeed the uh, null vector, so in fact the vectors uh, are uh, linearly dependent. Uh, the problem of the linear independence of vectors or linear dependence of vectors uh, is equivalent to the problem of finding the kernel of a matrix. Uh, and uh, this in turn can be used to solve system of uh, linear equations. Uh, so, for example, assume that we have the following system of uh, linear equations and we want to so solve it uh, using SageMath. Uh, let us first define the matrix of the coefficients. Now write the vector of constant terms. To find just one particular solution of our system of equation, uh, we can use the um, built-in function solve right. So type v equals m dot solve right of w and this produces a vector v. To verify that v is uh, indeed a solution to our system, we can just multiply m by v and compare the result with w. 
uh, if we write m uh, times uh, v uh, equal to uh, w, the result is true. So this means that yes, indeed, uh, v is just one solution of our system. But this was just one particular solution. Uh, and from the uh, course of linear algebra, uh, we know that the system may have uh, more solutions uh, if the uh, matrix is not invertible, then the system has potentially infinitely many solutions. Uh, so, uh, to find all the solutions, uh, what we do is we need to compute the kernel of the matrix. And then uh, the set of all the solutions is the coset of this kernel uh, expressed by this particular solution. For, so V plus the kernel is uh, the whole set of um, solutions to our system. Uh, we can construct the kernel, uh, call it kerm, uh, typing m dot right kernel. Now if we take the sum v plus a random element from our kernel and we multiply m by this uh, vector, uh, we can see that the result is again equal to w. So yes, in fact, uh, this uh, one particular sol solution plus uh, any random element from our kernel gives us another solution uh, to our system. Uh, that's exactly what we know from a linear algebra. Uh, the particular solution plus the kernel is the set of all the solutions. That is all for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you find this uh, tutorial useful and see you another time.